Can we tell the story of a state with granite and sandstone and marble? Can we better understand the hopes and aspirations of its people by the design, the attention to detail, even the political intrigue and controversy that surrounds such a grand enterprise? If the people are well balanced in their ideal and understand that the great white light of conscience must be allowed to shine and by its interior illumination make clear the path of duty, then this capital truly represents the Commonwealth of Idaho. 100 years ago, that's what buildings did. The great ones told our story. Perhaps they still do. By 1905, 22 years after statehood in 1890, it was obvious that the legislature needed more space to carry out the duties of government. To oversee the design and construction of a new Capitol building for Idaho, Governor Frank Gooding helped establish the first Capitol Commission. As a lot of people aren't aware, the Capitol building was built in two phases, first the center portion and then the two wings, the Senate and the House side. The commission was established from the beginning through the completion of the wings in 1921. After touring other state capitals for ideas, the commission reported back that they liked the Mississippi capital best, even if it did need more light. Now the question was, who would create Idaho's capital? Turtelot and Hummel were not unknown to Boise residents. They had each designed houses and had collaborated on the Carnegie Library in St. John's Cathedral, which was under construction at the same time as the Capitol. Still, they first had to beat out architects from Idaho and from back east. And it was not a unanimous vote. Governor Gooding wanted someone else. But finally, on the third ballot, Turtelot and Hummel prevailed. Perhaps it was the emphasis on light that tipped the scale. 